It was unbelievable. And here to help us kind of break down, put it into perspective, uh, tell us where this ranks is one of the best in the business, an old friend, a dude that just hosted, I don't know, like a five hour show of the MMA hour, which is kind of an oxymoron, but whatever. He's a star of the At the Letters podcast. It is Ariel Hawani who rejoins us here. Yeah. I'm Tim and friends. What's going on, Ariel? How are you, bud? It's so great to be here. Uh, if I'm being honest, I thought you forgot about me because it's like the first time in three years that you've had me on the program. <laughs> no. But I guess when seismic things happen in MMA, oh, we call a little old Ariel to come <laughs> back and join us. Let me, uh, God's honest truth. And I know you work way too hard to even notice this, but the last time you were on, you said the exact same thing. And it was less than three years ago, and you I get mean, you, you you gave me. I don't me have the a beat. lot of good material. <laughs> I'm a I'm a Jewish boy. I like to pour on the Jewish guilt. That's my thing. So you've called me out now, and I feel embarrassed. And, oh, I I I love having you on, but I do go to the source on ish like this when ish like this happens. Like I heard uh, Daniel Cormier say that this was the greatest headshot that he has seen. Like where does this rank on all time knockouts and maybe even the way it kind of led into it. Well, that's that's part of the story, and it's it's up there, and it's very emotional for me because you have to fully appreciate Leon Edwards and his story to fully appreciate what he did. And I'll give you, like, the, the super quick Coles Notes version of it all, or Cliff Notes, as they say here in America. <laughs> Shout out to Coles. Um, Leon Edwards is a kid who grew up in Jamaica. His dad was involved in gangs. His dad was involved in drugs. They moved to Birmingham, England to, to get a better life. When he was 13, his dad was murdered. His mom was 15 when she had him. He didn't even know he has a brother, who, by the way, is a great MMA fighter in his own right named Fabian. Until he was six years old, he met his brother. And they grew up on the streets, and they were hanging around with the wrong people. And one day, they're walking by a gym. He's 17. His mom says, I want you to go there so that you stay off the streets. And so he's been at that same gym. He He's about to turn 31, by the way, this week. He's been there for 14 years, and he's not a, a bashful – he's not a, a braggadocious guy. He's not um, you know, a loud mouth. He's not the kind of guy who's going to puff his chest out. He's not you know, a character like some of the other guys in our sport who are very successful. He's quiet. He's you know, a, a hard hat, lunch pail kind of guy. He's a working man kind of guy. He's a trenches kind of guy. And over the past couple of years, he has been screwed left, right, and center by circumstance and the UFC, if I'm being honest. He had been unbeaten in 10 fights, and it still wasn't a guarantee that he would get this title shot and no one was giving him a chance and so to see leon edwards finally get this title shot in utah of all places he didn't even know what utah was when he was offered this fight in utah to see him with 56 seconds remaining pull off this incredible head kick when he was losing the fight and was 56 seconds away from losing the fight because he was down four rounds so what it's it's one of the greatest moments and one of the most emotional things that i've ever seen couldn't happen to a better guy a more deserving guy and uh, you know kamaru who we're looking at here is an incredible champion he deserves another crack but on Saturday it was Leon's day and it's a moment we'll be talking about forever so is is that the beauty is that the fault of MMA like I I feel like the I, fault yeah. it's the beauty listen but, if the Raptors are down 20 points to the Knicks in November uh, you can't shoot a 20 point shot to get back in there with a minute to go right right if you're down 21 points in an NFL game you can't throw a 21 point touchdown but in this sport he was the equivalent of down 20 points <laughs> that, that, but that's what and I'm saying right like was... Usman completely dominates and what he's got for it is on the wrong end of one of the greatest knockouts we've ever seen it's you know he was 56 seconds away from parading around that cage and talking about Canelo and talking about moving up to 205 but yeah. that octagon that canvas is the great equalizer and it's a 25 minute fight for a reason you you gotta fight it all out and I'm not trying to say that he <laughs> nope. uh you know he 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 didn't respect Leon or he didn't give him you know the proper you know it was it was a great fight he did great there's nothing you could say about Usman however I will give credit to Leon's corner and his coaching staff there is footage out there on the internet and you guys are showing some great clips of them talking about that specific sequence that he's going to dip he's going to dip and then yeah. we're going to hit him with that left kick and so that was not lucky by the way I see some people saying that was luck that was not lucky Leon prepared for that moment he was ready for the moment and when the time was right he nailed them um 
the reactions that we and listen, I get Joe Rogan reacts like that to every knockout, but the rest of the reactions, uh, is that like just just as a fan, and, and this is the beauty of talking to you because not only are you an analyst, not only are you a host, but you're a fan, and you, and you don't shy away from your fandom. Like those reactions, just on a fan level, are those like the greatest reactions? Like that's what makes the hairs, whatever's left in the back of my neck, stand up. Is the reaction that you can the shock. Best people like that not only like the reaction of the people his reaction he's a very quiet guy he's a very humble guy to see him crying as he's speaking to his mother on on facetime backstage is just i i actually just spoke to him earlier today on the show and he started crying again and we've never seen this out of leon before and so to see this and you know what's so great tim about this is that the knock on leon in the past mm -hmm. was that no one cared about him that he was too quiet he was too boring he was just like some kind of generic guy from England. Even three years ago when he fought in England, he was booed by his hometown crowd. Like they booed him because yeah. the fight in their minds was boring. And for him to elicit this kind of reaction, this guy in particular, I do a post show every Saturday night on Spotify Live. Shout out to them. We had people calling up. It was 7 a.m. in the UK calling us crying from all over the UK, from Birmingham, from London, yeah. crying because of what Leon Edwards did in that cage. So to see that guy, of all people, elicit this kind of emotion, it's uh, it's just a beautiful thing that I'll never forget. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of, and I'm more of a boxing guy, but it kind of reminded me of Lennox Lewis and his reputation, where it's like he gets the job yeah. done and people want more all the time. People want more. And then when he delivered it, he delivered it. All right, so I, I want to talk to you, and we don't have a ton of time here, and there's a bunch of things. Uh, WWE, back in your hometown, Montreal now in Toronto tonight what is your favorite WWE moment and it like we're I, I just as you pick up the Expos hat I just think Montreal screw job but what like where where are you WWE in your hometown funny you say that Tim yes I was in attendance November 1997 it was Jason Tackman my good friend and I sitting in the Molson Center when our beloved Bret Hart was screwed by the brass I was there you were I happened there. to be there it was an unbelievable moment my guy Bret Hart got screwed I was also there the Monday after Wrestlemania 18 at the now Bell Center when Hulk Hogan came back and he got that massive ovation after the match against the Rock so if I had to pick two and by the way Montreal pound for pound best crowd in the history of pro wrestling no doubt about it in my mind uh I would have to pick those two moments as the most memorable. I like that. And also, uh, if you're talking about boxing crowds in Canada, you go no further than Montreal. Oh, with, tremendous. Without a doubt. All right, so last one. And I know you were on the At The Letters podcast. So for those following along at home, Spotify Live, catch Ariel Hawani. Just follow him at Ariel Hawani on Twitter. Also, MMA Hour, wherever you get your fine podcasts, or you can see it live. Um, at The Letters podcast with Ben and Arden, and you were at Yankee Stadium. Yes. Did you, were you there on Sunday? I was not there on Sunday, but I have a funny connection to Sunday. If you're going to ask me about the Alec Manoa <laughs> yeah, like, uh, situation. Where, where's that heavyweight fight? Judge versus Manoa. Let me, tell you <laughs> Let me tell you something. If Alec Manoa calls me up right now and says, come to Boston, I need some backup. I'm running to Boston. That is my guy <laughs> for life. I love that guy. I love him as an athlete. I love him as a person. How about this? Alec Manoa's agent, Jeff Randazzo, is a good friend of mine. On Thursday, he got his BP passes, and I took my kids to go meet Alec Manoa. And he's a massive MMA fan. You do not want to mess with Alec Manoa. <laughs> and I'm going to set up a training with Alec Manoa and Jorge Masvidal this offseason. And so a message to the New York Yankees, a message to Garrett Cole and Aaron Judge and all those fake, phony jabronis from the Bronx. Don't mess with Manoa, because if you mess with Manoa, you got to mess with Vladdy. And if you mess with Vladdy and the boys, you got to mess with Heelwani. And you don't want to mess with Heelwani. Trust me, I'll 10-7 all of yous. <laughs> that was amazing. I was just going to shut up and let you cut the promo. So hold on. Masvidal, Manoa, like two Miami legends coming together. 305. 6'6", 260. I don't know if you, like, I know Judge is a big human being. But Manoa, Manoa seems Softy. to have a, have a little, uh, little swagger, shall we say. Listen, go, I, I posted a picture. The guy's a tank. Yeah, the, guy, I, I, the guy would have to cut weight to get to 265. You know, Judge is a show pony. I mean, he doesn't have, he, he doesn't have this. He doesn't have the corazón. Alec Manoa is from the mean streets of Miami, all right? This guy has seen it all. He has done it all. There's my guy, Manoa. 
no, uh, there, look at us cheesing there with that beautiful necklace and those sunglasses. <laughs> There's my guy. I mean, the guy is a freaking linebacker, okay? You want nothing. Garrett Cole, yeah, you sounded really tough from the dugout, bud. I mean, what is this guy talking about? And Manoa, the mensch that he is, walked right up to Judge and apologized. He wasn't trying to start something with him. Come on, enough with the fake tough guy stuff. Listen, the Jays are coming. Got three out of four in the Bronx. We're going to Fenway now. I'm all in. You know, don't be don't be blinded by this. This is, you know, always in my heart. But I'm all in. And I don't want to hear anyone in, in Toronto jumping off that bandwagon just yet. We're about to make a run. Yes, I say we. It's going to be a great story. And come October, we will be celebrating another championship for Canada. Helwani cuts the promo twice. And Jesse, we've got two Mensch references in the yeah. last two weeks no, right that here. That was absolute fun. On Tim and yeah. Friends. Yeah, that was fire. Uh, always appreciate you doing this. Always great catching up with you. And it seems like uh, we need another hour, but you've worked a five-hour show already. So I'll shut the bleep up and let you go. Always a pleasure. I look forward to my next appearance in three years. Thank you for having me, too. <laughs> there, there is Ariel Hawani here on Tim and Friends. All right, got the last.